All right. Wow, nice. Your your autofocus is really pumping yeah. a lot today. I don't know what that is. Is that a setting? I don't know. It's I don't think it's a it's a zoom setting. It's it's probably a camera setting. Maybe that's better. Yeah. Let's see. Hold on. Yeah, it's much better like this. Good afternoon. A good night. We meet again. <laughs> yes. Hey, I got Anthony's book. And? Uh, I didn't know what was happening. I got like this package from Starlight Media. I was like, what the hell is this? I didn't order anything. And then I was like, man, it's really heavy. I wonder what this thing is. And then when I saw that it was that book, I was like, holy shit. I didn't realize it was going to be so, it's such a thing. It's enormous. It's, uh, uh, um, I mean, every page is artwork. Yeah. It's completely colored it's uh it's amazing yeah i haven't read it through read it yet but i i, I went through it yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's pretty impressive there's a ton of music i wasn't expecting that either yeah did you get a copy with the uh i don't know what you call it, you call it like the black ink is very thick and you you can yeah feel that. yeah, yeah. It, it, it is that are there different versions or something or yeah there there's two versions as far as i know okay so that must be some special because i was man the 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 notation is you could i mean it's not like you could read it like braille but it's uh it's definitely no, thick. who knows who knows i don't know yeah it's, hmm. it's it's cool it's a it's a very interesting book i mean i really hope that people get to get to read it and you know because i think that it touches on a few subjects uh that are not really covered much um as you know like the practicing musician thing which is very unpopular to write about <laughs> so what 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 we're actually doing <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, it's probably going to be, um, I mean, unless he does a digital version, it's probably going to be a pretty exclusive group of people who have it. Yeah. Uh, but maybe they'll, I don't know what, it's getting a lot of attention, so that's cool. Yes. Yeah. And what about you? Um, I've had a couple of revelations this week. Wow. Um, the first one is, you know, I've been writing this music and the idea is that I'm going to write it all and then I'm going to play it and record it. Yeah. And so there's like these two giant halves to this thing. Like I want to get it. I don't want to dink around on the instrument until the music's kind of together. Mm -hmm. Some of the pieces I, I some of the pieces were written uh, from the instrument, but several weren't. So, or I did a little, but then I really wanted to do the composing away from the instrument. And then mm -hmm. I would have to go and th then I get to go play it all, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I decided there was one piece that actually I wasn't gonna include it in this material because it's it wasn't quite like the rest of the material I thought, but I've, I've, I've enjoying it so much. I thought, you know what? I've written it. I've got it. I've got it formed. The same thing we were talking about this ending that, that yeah. I should just, I'll just do this one. I'll just play this one. I'll just start it. And you know what? It took hardly any time at all. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's going to be 95% composing 5% playing. And so that's a big relief off my my back that it's, uh, it's only, you know, only this only this piece or you think uh, I only it's going to apply to everything? Piece. Yeah. Okay. Been, but the thing is, once <clears throat> the, the thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to get the comp the the the, 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 the compositions together, and then just focus on performance. 
you know, and just try to get good performances. Um, and um, so I kind of wanted to make it a separate part of the process, but there's two, two pieces, pretty challenging ones uh, that I'm going to start with just playing. And the playing's really just not that, it just, it's not taking that long. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and, and actually what's interesting, what's interesting to see is if the arrangement will change, not the, 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 the structure of the piece may change a little, but um, it's very challenging to not, um, well, I mean, I, I guess I've decided I don't really care. I kind of wanted to just make the, the, make it as streamlined as possible. So I'm not using real, I'm not using effects or I don't have to think about the sound. It's just the, the sound. Um, but when, when I get in there, when I get in on a couple of sections, man, it's really great to, to, um, take um take some of the notes and put them on a, a separate performance and 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 have have kind of a call and response or or maybe add some harmonies or um just um it's production but it's not really uh it's not really like fishing for the right sound the sound is the sound it's just the, i don't i don't know what you call it. it's like halfway between production and arrangement and i guess it is kind of orchestration i guess it's kind of an orchestration although um, so I'm trying to figure out, you know, I'm going through the process of, uh, you know, is this part going to be doubled or is it going to be doubled at the octave or is it going to be plain? And what kind of like if you do, um, <clears throat> as I was kind of originally envisioning kind of like, you know, a string quartet, you just got the four guys or girls and that's it. You know, you don't, you don't bring in a double bass or like, a couple of violins you got what you got and i kind of wanted to start like that and, and it, like like solo acoustic guitar like tony jabal's record you know maybe he did do overdubs i don't i don't know but i don't think he did i don't i don't hear it that way but as soon as you start to orchestrate just a little bit it's like oh man now it's the sec it's there's just so much more drama now you know it was like this and now we got a low note and then and so i'm kind of doing that but but that's fun and that takes that doesn't take much time Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see that um, it's actually going to be, the recording is going to be much quicker and it's much more fun than the writing part for me. <laughs> um, and what was the other revolution? Oh, tuning. Holy shit. Had some tuning problems. And uh, it was really, it's really interesting. Uh, because um, the, the, the problem, the issue was uh, there's a part and then it's doubled kind of at the fifth. There's a lot of fifths in it. And I was like, oh man, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound in tune. It doesn't sound terrible. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I wonder, I wonder. So I put, I put a, a here's the revelation. I put up some drum loops fucking sounds great take it away damn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh big difference big difference in the tuning hearing you know with with anything else going on but some something else rumbling along there yeah so i had to go in and um um be a little more precise uh, with some of the strings yeah so it's, it's so exposed and like when you get it the thing is when you get it like if you're in this if you're if you're in the wide zone it's fine and if you're in the wide zone and it's rock and roll it's, it's totally fine mm -hmm. uh, take the drums away and it's it's okay but man when you get it in tune it's like oh shit <laughs> yeah, that's that's the, the the problem of guitar instruments yeah like and the fretted, and I, fretted instruments yeah, and the doubling, uh, the, the the fifth doubling was um, it's on different spots of the instrument on different yeah. strings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, if if it was just up a fifth, even on the on the next string, it would sound fine. Uh, yeah. But it's the, a, the, it's a different register. Octaves, different register. Uh, yeah, it was an octave actually. 
Uh, mm -hmm. No, it was a, it was an octave and a fifth. That was it, octave and a fifth. So, so the, those particular notes are actually two strings away from each other, and you know, seven frets or something like that. And uh, yeah. Man. Yeah, it's a different it's a, it's a different scale length, you know. Like like what yeah. we do is we put bridges with our fingers, and so that's why yeah. if if it's not if it's not doubled in the same fret space or like you know the, the same vicinity, let's say. If you're if you're just over a string, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wonder how how does that work with um, and fretboard man my head can't even get around that i guess it's not that it's maybe better but it's still not no it's 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 uh, the problems problems are the same yeah it's just that you have a different scale length for the for the whole string right right, right? so um, you can have like uh, a longer string for the for the low for the low notes and you know shorter one for the high notes and right, the higher right. strings but there, there's this other, uh, what's his name? But anyway, there, there are these really weekly frets. Have you seen them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Henry yeah. Kaiser has those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it works pretty well. Yeah, I, mean, I played I, Henry's. I played Henry's guitar with it, and it's like, holy shit! I wish you know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It does work. Uh, Matthias has it yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matthias. Yeah, exactly. What, what, what? Freakazoid, or what does he call himself? Uh, well, Freak e e Eklund, Eklund is his name, I think. Matthias yeah. Eklund. Yeah, yeah. Freak yeah, exactly. That I, I first, uh, yeah, Free Kitchen, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's the, the like the first time like I played with him like maybe fifteen years ago or so, and he had one of those instruments, and it was pretty impressive. But then still, you know, like I, I don't know, I'm I'm just not so. Um, I don't know. I mean, your composition, I would be interested in like really knowing how your compositions work there, right? So to, to see what the problem may be, like I, I usually don't don't really worry that much. And I never like, I never quite had a I never quite had this issue before. And I think it may be because um uh probably because of this fifth this thing you know because it was a, harm, a particular kind of uh this particular kind of harmony like you go into thirds you go to more exotic stuff well mm -hmm. you know but this this where it's a pure yeah. um, it's a pure exposed uh pure exposed fifth and mm -hmm. uh, like i say the 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 i mean if you're really out of tune you're really out of tune but once you start to get into the zone it's okay but when you get it really in the zone it's like oh that's night and day yeah yeah hey, do you have a working title for this new material uh i i've been using the 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 working title since i conceived of it years ago of, of, of gravities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, i don't know if that'll stick or not but i was yeah. i was uh i was kind of doing the opposite strategy of the the this flood record that's all watery, uh, the, 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 the waters record. And so this was all pointed sounds and mutes and um, uh, just looking at gravity, musical gravity as well. Yeah. And, and how does this music um, relate to your, the music you, you know, from the 90s that you did in the 90s? Is there, uh, is there, do, do you see a resemblance or is this really something completely new? Uh, the only resemblance I can see is um, uh, the rhythmic drivingness uh, and um, uh, maybe there's kind of kernels of the harmonic language back then but it's 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 all very raw and very square and and when we say 90s I, I, for some reason i was going back to the raw power uh mm -hmm. stick cassette but but i guess that's not really that really wasn't your question uh, that that it's almost closer to that um uh when you were mentioning the fifth i was thinking of raw power because yeah yeah you got you got the fifth in there yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, uh, I, I guess there's more, it's, it, it, it's probably more akin to that because when I got into the, the, the 1000 years, the third star, and then the, the Trey Gun band with, with Bob and Tony or, or Bob, and I guess Antonio eventually, uh, Molybdenum mm -hmm. record, it was more, um, my concern with the instrument at that point was how do, how do we make these instruments um, sound as good as all the other instruments in their roles that they're doing? So if it's, if it's playing bass, like how do we, you know, how do we compete with, you know, I didn't think of it exactly like competition, but you, you put it next to, you know, John Paul Jones, you put it next to, you know, the, um, Pino Palladino, or, you know, can you go in and play a sting record and, you know, how good, how, you know, the bass is like that. Okay. So now the, the, the rhythm guitar zone, let's do this. So I kind of thought of it more as, uh, uh, like a, a orchestral palette, you know, mm -hmm. with our, what kind of our, our rock, rock or and, and more, more traditional references, like traditional rock. References. Yeah, or or at least like um, uh, there's all these things that this instrument can do, and 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 I guess I was focusing a lot on the upper end because there was not so much that seemed pretty unexplored at the time. Now, you know, it's just so so I was just treating it like a, a, you know, if you're going to do rhythm guitar stuff. What, do you, what, what kind of stuff can you do and how can you make it sound really good and how do you, you know, and, and I didn't care about, uh, yeah, let's overdub the shit out of, it, out of it. You know, I don't care about playing it solo. I don't care about playing these parts. You know? uh, and if something isn't working, find another overdub that makes it work kind of a thing, you know, or, or let's do it, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's use the whammy pedal and send it up two octaves and put sustains up there. So, so more like kind of grabbing the, so in a way, this is more back to the, the roots of just the fingers on the instrument, and that's the sound you get, mm -hmm. which is, I guess, closer to the, the earlier uh, stick stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny when I, I, I have to say, when I first started playing the war guitar specifically, um, my, you know, there are some pieces that are like that interlocked stuff that, are, that you could only do on that instrument. Um, but, but also I kind of was more in, in, um, not wanting to legitimize the instrument in all these territories, but at least make it, you know, there's these things that these, these musical functions, can this instrument do that musical function? You know, one of the first things that, 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 uh, I came across was, uh, you know, taking it out of the zone that it had been known as, um, I'm remembering now and. It was with uh, it was with Tony Arnold on Toya's Ophelia Shadow record, which was the first one. And we had had, um, I think the first record I made, like real record, I think. I can't really quite remember, except for the, the punk rock 45s that I made. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, label and, and with, with Tony Jabal and Tony Arnold, the engineer, and Toya and Paul Beavis. Um, we had recorded, um, you know, these arrangements where I was the bass player, and then I had I had like somehow found a wah wah pedal, or I had I had um, and you caught it on the the raw power because one of those tracks ended up coming into some of the world or something. I had a uh, this Mutron octave divider mm -hmm. that I was putting on the top side and playing little melodies, and then. I kind of was playing around with uh, uh, just the fifth, you know, just the high fifth on the bass side as kind of a rhythmic stab thing. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing a similar thing on the top side and Tony Arnold was like, let's do that. Let's, re let's record that. So he, he, uh, he, he kind of lured me into this thing where we, we put the two sides of the instrument left and right, which you, you know, you wouldn't do as a solo, as a solo mm -hmm. instrument. And then I just played those chord stabs on each side. So it was really kind of like a, a marimba thing. And mm -hmm. like suddenly that, that silly little thing that, you know, anybody can do now was like, oh, that's a whole revelation. Like this instrument can do totally different things. Um, and the stereo was really cool. 
you know, with that. And so that kind of, uh, I don't know, that just kind of opened up to, yeah, why try to do all this, this, you know, yeah. let's just do, yeah. let's just do that, you know, or maybe <laughs> yeah. that, that works. So, uh, so this stuff is kind of the opposite, uh, opposite of that. It's back to, it's back to, uh, you know, we'll see. I'm still, I still have to go in and play all this stuff. Um, but I, I, I see it as because I, I've been writing it with, and, and I can't remember how much we talked about it in these, these talks or not, but, and you know more than what we've talked about here, but I made a sample library of just the pure instrument and I've been writing with that. So I've been writing with the sound of the instrument away from the instrument mm -hmm. um, and not even being concerned about um, how playable things are. Cause I'll, I'll figure it out when the time comes, <laughs> you know? Yeah, the the interesting thing is that I think most of what we you know I, I think everything is playable and anything is playable. Yeah, yeah, right. Like it's just it's just a matter of like figuring out how. Yeah, yeah, and you know the the real trick, as you know, is okay. It's playable, but what sounds the best? Yeah, because of all the ways you can do it, you know, and and jumping mm -hmm. around and um, you know that's that's what's. Uh, that's kind of. Um, so how, how many parts are there? Are, are you limiting yourself to? Um, I'm not, I think, I don't think I'm gonna be limiting myself. You know, I wanted to, I, 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 how I look at it, it's, it's kind of tricky. How I look at it, um, what, I, what I want to do is end up with a recording and, I, and I'm actually gonna have the score as well. Um, but if something will sound better, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. So if it sounds better to have six parts, I'm going to do that, you know, and then let's say, uh, this thing wanted to be played live. You could easily make it be three parts. You know, it's not, it's not, uh, I'm not, um, I don't feel like I have to record a live performance kind of a thing, you know? Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll have to see. There's a, couple of, there's a couple of things that are almost solo. And there's some things that will be like chunks of it are solo or two parts, you know, I think. Uh, I don't know, it's very, very interesting. I may be like, when I finish with this, I may be just like, I don't think I can do anything ever again. It's been so involved. <laughs> I know that's not true, but it's the, you know, it's the opposite of you and I sitting down here improvising for an hour or like for nine hours. <laughs> uh, it's so the opposite of that, you know, and, and I even get, I was getting nervous that I spent like, I've been working on this for a few years, not, not exclusively, obviously, but it's like, man, all this time I put in, looking at the time it's fucking 28 minutes long now holy shit what am i going to do but now i've got enough where i feel like um i want to be able to like i i feel com like i felt nervous about cutting things but now i feel like i've got enough ideas that not not cutting cutting but like uh this is this is i, I can lose some bars these bars i can lose these bars you know the intro fuck the intro I was so in love with the intro, but now it's it sounds stupid. So uh, I feel more comfortable uh, losing stuff. But we'll see. It's it's really it's a it's a strange it's a strange uh, time. I think, um, and you know this as well. Like the 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 score is the music, right? Yes. That's kind of how we work now. Yeah, and even though I'm doing the score and then putting a performance in place of it, it's still like when you're, it's this really awesome, awesome, strange thing that, that uh, music's never had before 50 years ago, right? At the most mm -hmm. where like the, the, the thing is separate from the performance and, and our notation is the thing. It's, it's awesome and strange. You know, um, it's very interesting um, because I've had this idea um, to go into the studio this summer and basically 
you know, rather than you say, like you spent two years or three years writing and then recording, I want to try to write and record a whole like 40 minute album or something in a week. In, 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 in a contained, in a container. In a contained, like really, really just, like just yeah. Yeah. a week in the studio and write as I record, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and more in the sense of um, putting down maybe, let's say, a click first and, um, and strummed acoustic guitar or, mm -hmm. you know, like, like going like in this, this, this more um, one man band kind of approach of writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, have to, I, I think I'm going to do it. I mean, I, I do need, I need, do need to do some sort of crowdfunding for it, but uh, so that's sort of in the way of me but saying you, I am going to do feel, it. Don't you feel yeah. like you have? You probably have the uh, what's the word? Like the the technique or the chops, the 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 interaction with the the instrument and the the software and all. You kind of have that in place, right? I do. I mean, my idea is to work with an engineer actually is to have yeah. like um, like all the instruments set up. So that I can sort of jump around from instrument to instrument and just kind of like, like I, you know, that because you were talking about improvisation, uh, composition, and I want to do something where it's both at all times somehow, right? So I can jump in and I may have uh, already an idea of what the chord sequence is, let's say, but then I don't know what the rhythm of the bass guitar is going to be or, you know, and that's sort of like the idea to build I don't know. Like I, at the moment, I'm thinking it's going to be like just two 20 minute pieces, right? You know, something like that. But um, it's really, um, you know, and this is, you know, I'd be interested in how this is for you. Like for me, music is sort of, or even the, the final product is somehow represented within me, even before I know what it is going to be somehow. And it's because it's not music. Like I'm not thinking about it as, music it's it's sort of like the it's everything it's and you know it's it's everything but music that is it's an emotion it's sort of like the drive to do something or it's it's a certain um i would say even like a certain kind of aggression you know that sort of has it's it's you know like just putting this in action or starting this process will produce that music Right. So, 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 but somehow, because I have like uh, decades of experience now, I somehow, somehow have not an idea as a digital thing, but an emotional understanding of what it's going to be. And, and I, I find that fascinating. There's like, and with, with quite a lot of my pieces, it was like that, that I really didn't know what it was going to sound like, but I knew what it was going to feel like. I mean, that sounds like, uh, it sounds pretty ideal. But certainly, uh, certainly that's what non-musicians think we do. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, it is, it is kind of ideal because it's, it's sort of this, um, this, uh, like, a, as we, you know, like a lot of people and including us, we procrastinate like certain things. Right? And in a way, that's what it feels like when I'm, when when all this pressure builds up to uh, to create right, so like maybe I said a year ago that I will I'm going to do it and I'm going to make a demo a MIDI demo for it before I go to the studio, but I, you know it's just something I say to myself, but I already know I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so then I will actually get to the studio and I won't have the demo, but I know that everything is in there. And I didn't really have to do the demo, but my my mind keeps telling me I have to do things the way that uh, people who are probably not as inspired, let's say, maybe mm. you know, need to do it. I don't know, but um, yeah. yeah, and I mean, m making this time constraint too, which you know, we don't we don't have to stick to those things, but um, it's still it's still very powerful. Yeah, I, I usually do. I try to sort of like have deadlines. Yeah, uh, I feel that is that is kind of like the best way for me to um, to get things done. You know, expect moves you know, stuff along so fast, doesn't it? Yeah, and you know, 
make, it helps you make quick decisions. Yeah, and without a deadline, you can't really procrastinate. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> right. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> you know, when I when I worked with um, Henry Kaiser, who's one of the most unique musicians I've ever worked with, um, he has this thing about. Um, he can make fast decisions and he it's like a virtue for him mm -hmm. and it's almost like it's almost like the decision i wouldn't say it's arbitrary but it's it, 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 I, I i couldn't i couldn't do the way that he does it like like i i sometimes just i find that um um letting something uh kind of ferment for a bit will make becomes clear but henry can just like mm -hmm. well we're gonna do this we're gonna do this now he came he came down here and we recorded and he just played shit loads of guitars like he, he would just decide like i'm just gonna do this thing on this thing and then that, okay and now to the next one bring the next one up okay i'm gonna do this thing and it's not even um uh and i'm not I'm not saying this in a negative way it's not even whether it's good or bad it's just yeah. this is what i'm doing now and that's what i did and what's the next one? Bring the next one up. And uh, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild that, that kind of decision making. David Sylvian used to talk about, I think he he thought that he made decisions like that. I, I don't think he does. I think he, he, he <laughs> yeah. rusters yeah. about a lot, but um, there was- how about, how about Robert? Well, you know, that's why I was thinking about it in terms of David and I can't quite recall the thing, but I can remember David feeling a little frustrated um, that he would make decisions where Robert wouldn't make decisions and they would get in a little, and, and I can't even, I can't, I have no more memory of that at all than that at all, but there was a little tension between them. Um, and I don't think of Robert as a non-decision maker at all, but he's certainly not a Henry Kaiser, but uh, I, I, I suspect it was probably more, um, David wanted to, and I'm extra, I'm totally just, projecting and guessing now, but David wanted to make um, decisions about um, how the production would go, like, 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 like layering of parts, or let's, let's take this part apart and make it like, like I was just saying, you know, like the, the, the low notes would be one sound and, but, but, you know, let's take the, let's, let's orchestrate out the stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, Robert just wanted to play his part and go have his soup and then come back and play a solo tomorrow you know <laughs> um like i say i'm just extrapolating on that but i but i do remember david saying something about decision like that and i thought wow that's that's weird you would just decide i i guess i've always had this kind of issue like i'm not really the decider of it i'm just trying to figure out what the music wants to be uh, so if i can't hear it then i can't i can't just impose my will on it of course, that's not true. We do that all the time. Uh, but there does seem to be kind of a, a spectrum of that. Like Henry will just freaking give me 30 decisions and I'll give you 30 answers right now. Or, or sometimes sometimes working with Michael Kotze, we'll, we, we kind of joke around, but if like there's an A and B, just always pick B. Just <laughs> always pick B. <laughs> I mean, some of, these, some of these little decisions that we get ourselves into, they don't matter. You know the little yeah. things like yeah. you know like 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 what the eq on the, the this thing or, or or should we drop this note or um it's not that they don't matter but um you know we get we get all it's like the end of the world this this the, 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 especially when you get closer to the end of a record you know like that last you're like oh shit, i don't know if the mix is right maybe that one little tambourine note needs to be a little pan to the right a little <laughs> you know it's um, a while ago i had a conversation with uh, my friend adrian benavides um, about remix culture right and and i think like the ideal mind frame is and i think i have that is like whenever i perform something i do not care if it gets edited or if anybody removes a few notes or uses it uses it in a different different track or even pitches it down or, 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 like or whatever. Shit, you? you're, you're, I, I, I like it i like it but it's also but it's also like it really is liberating to kind of like know that 
the quality that we, I think we, just not just for me, but for me, I'm, I can I can act that way. So I just know the quality is there, and and so no matter in which context it gets used, no matter how loud it's it's mixed, it's it's going to work. You know, mm-hmm. like and that that is that is um, uh, what's the word like confidence. You can mm-hmm. call it confidence, but it is not really not really confidence. It's just it's just uh, it's more sort of uh, um, surrender, mm-hmm. right? Like it's uh, and and I think it's 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 the best way to to work, like not to not to feel not to feel precious about stuff, mm-hmm. right? And it's especially or you know especially in collaboration when you when you are in collaboration with other people. Um, when I did Todd Morton 513, the, um, you know, the big piece that then w- was actually performed as an orchestral piece, um, that was really the first time I, uh, there was no compromise and everything was like the way that I wanted it. And, uh, and it was interesting because people really liked it. With so the and orchestra that, version or the... the, or the oh, even, even, the, even the original version. The original okay. version was like... To me, like it was a hundred percent what I wanted to do. There was really nothing ever uh, changed from my original vision, and it was the very first time in my life that I really had done that. Like there was, I mean, there were people involved, but nobody was, uh, you know, ever made me reconsider any decisions, right? And when I when I got like great feedback on that, I was uh, thinking, okay, so maybe, maybe sometimes it makes sense to actually. Um, feel more precious about mm, mm. what I do. And, uh, but I, do, I, I have not succeeded. You got <laughs> over that. that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, for, for example, with the string quartet, yeah, that's like, everything is, is the way I wanted it. Right. Um, but you didn't, but, you didn't, you didn't do precious with that. Did you? With, uh, with the string quartet. You yeah. Mean? Yeah. Didn't you, didn't you give them a lot of free reign? Yeah, to, to interpret the yeah. music. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, no, I'm not precious about that. But if they wanted to change a note or not play, you know, no, I said, no, it has to be played exactly the way it is written there, you know, because there's there's like the certain level where I think I decide this is how far I, I go and this is how far I want to uh, claim ownership, let's say, whatever mm-hmm. that means, right? But then on top of that, um, yeah, things can get changed, right? But yeah, but no, it's it's interesting because I think for me, um, both modes work. Like yeah, I can I can just yeah. let stuff go, and I can also, um, you know, like you know, like feeling precious about something is also like a an expression that's sort of like not nice, you know. Because, I mean, I don't know. That's how we know. use it. Yeah, that's how yeah, we know. That's how we use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But you know, it's also the it's also the same. I mean, it looks from the outside the same, and it probably feels from the inside too the same as um, uh, being thorough with your materials that you've you know that you've looked at every note that you've kind of uh, you know. There's a great line in um, uh, the Rilke. Uh, uh, there's a great line in Rilke where he's talking about. Uh, you know, you say the word, you know, um, what is it like um, door sill or window and you, you like, you just massage everything about it as you're saying it. And that's, you know, that's the, that's the plus side of this, that everything's gone through your blender. You haven't let something just slip through without yeah, yeah, exactly. tasting it and, and, you know, it's not about making it your own, but it's that you've attended, you've attended to it, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. And that's where, you know, I think that's where, you know, that's where, uh, you know, working with the semi-pro is really tough mm-hmm. when they're on their, they're, they're kind of making that transition to um, whatever you want to call that semi-pro, even though I use that word now to define all of us, because none of us are pure pros anymore, but uh, you know what I mean? That, that sense of like moving from amateur to their idea of pro that can be, that person can be just a complete utter pain in the ass because they're trying to be precious, but they don't really know how, and they don't know what's important yet. So they're just a pain in the ass. 
um, you know, the opposite of that is uh, you've really just, you know, you've eaten everything that you, you've attended to everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's interesting because like the uh, uh, perspective and uh, like if we're talking about mixing, for example, right? Like just listen to your mix today and listen to it tomorrow, right? And it will sound completely different. So you cannot really ever be one hundred percent sure. And and you could say, okay, so that's the reason why I'm going to spend three years mixing my record. Or you could say, I'm just going to spend one day. You know, I spend one day and I'll make another record tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I know. Yeah, I'm in the in the first camp. Yeah, I mean, or like, I mean, the camp to, you know, to, to just, you know, that's, that's why I, why I'm setting deadlines. Yeah. And that's why it kind of like works to go into a studio with a band and say, okay, we have five days to record 10 songs. Like, it's, I don't want to ever have 10 days for 10 songs. Mm. Stupid. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why I say this, but it's, mm. it's sort of like, you don't want to, you don't want to think in, you know, you don't want to um, uh, put an equal sign between day and piece of music. Yeah, I agree. That's actually, I, I wasn't sure what you were going to say, but that's the, I felt this kind of terror when you said that 10 songs. Okay. But that means a song each day. And like, yeah. what if a song doesn't need a whole day? What if something needs more than a day? And all, all yeah. of a sudden I start to feel like the back of my neck, <laughs> even just yeah. 10 songs, like, okay, shit. And, and that's why it's healthier to have less less time. I think that's that's kind of like a healthy approach, mm -hmm. right? So so you're prepared to just go for it, and and you know like sometimes you can you like the setup takes three days and then you record everything in two days. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I would. I feel like I would love to. I don't know if this is really true, but I would love to try and i don't know what the musical context would have to be um to record um not not specifically to record like anal on analog but to record in that way where you don't um you, you, you it's it's just a much more precarious and you can't do it's not that you i guess you can't do a lot of performances that thing where it's like we've only got this tape and we just can't keep punching you in yeah, you know, or you've got to lay down your part as this at the same time as the other guy, and it's going on to the same track, or mm -hmm. you know, all the stuff that the Beatles had to deal with, and they got fucking awesome performances. So maybe they, I, I don't know, maybe you rehearse a lot, or um, you know, that that that, that kind of thing where there's it, you know, it would have to be created totally artificially or, or, or under kind of contract agreement with yourself that you were going to do something like that. But it, it definitely amps up the performance and amps up the, um, the presence of the performance, the performing, you know. Yeah, I was that, that's kind of like what I what I have in the back of my, my mind, you know, to do something. It sounds like, like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where I mean I, I'm sure there's going to be editing involved, right? But it would be editing, but there but, wouldn't be enough time to fiddle around that much. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know what I was thinking of doing was actually, um, and I don't know if if I will be able to afford to do that, but have two engineers, like have an engineer for engineer for the day and one for the night, mm. and sort of like uh, during the day, record, 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 and like. Mm, mm. sequence right and then and piece at, it together at, at night and, and, and at night have somebody just move stuff a little bit or fix it you know or but not not fix it by by punching in or something like that but maybe by, no, but, but, do, by copying a node or whatever like you yeah. know so yeah. um that's sort of like my idea for that and you know like uh speaking of this uh, uh, there is have you ever heard the re uh, record amarok by oldfield mike oldfield uh, no i haven't heard that one it it's I, I really think any you know everybody needs to know it it's a it was recorded in uh 89 i think or in 90 and it's um it's a 60 minute continuous piece of craziness and uh and absolutely fascinating um mosaic kind of writing um and 
And this is and before you're... Pro Tools, right? Yes. So it yeah. was done on a like on one of the early Sony digital machines, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. yeah. And and it's it's absolutely fascinating. And like, um, you know, this I like this idea of. You know, I I don't I don't know, and I I don't even want to assume that he had like the grand vision for this piece when he started recording it. I don't think so. But somehow um, the imagination when you're working um, in the in the analog paradigm, let's say, it's different, right? Like you, there's 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 a different kind of 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 space that the idea is living. Yeah and, yeah, and 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 I have I have the feeling that that space is actually much there's much more range, and much more resolution in that, uh, you know, pre digital paradigm. Let's say, right? Of Are you talking about because the 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 timeline is fixed and you're putting stuff on, onto the timeline? Is that what you mean? I think you know, like I, I don't know. I think it's like if you if you're thinking of of the resolution of like. Of uh, the way that we think of digital, like where you have certain num certain number of numbers, a certain uh, resolution within a, an audio file, right? And you can and you can do this these this this these dynamics within that, right? So in terms of like a, a space that is ideas, so it's like a it's a spiritual space. I think something like that exists where you kind of like get into a, a space that works like digital, where there's a limited number of, of uh, steps available, but there's also some sort of mode of creativity, let's say, of creation, where there is endless, an endless number mm. of possibilities. Mm. And, and, and I think that that kind of like uh, then manifests in, in when you're filling uh, the musical spectrum with parts, let's say, if you have that attitude of these pieces do fit, or it's just, you know, they do fit, right? There's, it's sort of like the attitude of, it doesn't matter if these parts, like in, in, in principle or on paper, they collide, they all collide, mm. right? But the, but the fact that you kind of like have this, um, this idea of acting in an analog world, I don't know how to, how to, how to, this is the first time I have this idea, actually, I'm talking about this. There's, there's sort of like, like you can put more things in. There's, there's more space, right? There's, there's more, uh, and I don't know, like you, you have uh, more experience actually recording with tape, maybe uh, a little bit, right? Like mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't have that at all, but I, I think that it's, um, there's more to the, you know, going from analog to digital, it's not just a technological thing. It's no, also, no, it's also, no. it's also a, it's a hum, hum, humanistic. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The performance is, is so important. And, and, and when I say performance, it's like um, the vibe or the presence is so important. That's, you know, whereas in digital, you can have no vibe and no presence and you can make a, a good sounding record. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's good mute, it's good, but you know, you, you can, you can, you can have, you can start with nothing <laughs> and, and you can actually manipulate nothing into something. Right. Yes. Whereas in, in, in analog, you, you, I, I don't know. It just, you just hear, it, right. It, it's, that's all you have is the performance, you know, also there's no grid. I mean, that's the big thing. And, and, and I think that's the big thing that um, has affected the, the, the structure and compositions of music since post, post Pro Tools is this thinking in terms of a grid. We, there, there was no grid. We didn't, even, we didn't even use click tracks. Pat used click tracks. I mean, eventually there were drum machines for me, but I never used a click track. So the tempos, you know varying or whatnot. But the, the biggest difference for me is really, um, I guess it's, it's most ex exemplified in uh, when you mixed in analog, it was a performance. 
and and it's not now you know it, it, you're you're setting up the performance uh like a film edit or something but but uh you know everybody's grabbing knobs and every mix is utterly unique and also i always felt like um let's say you didn't need to turn any knobs let's say you even had flying faders because the the the, the molybdenum record we made on bob's knee board that had flying faders but nothing else was automated all it would do is just adjust the volume level you know or mute the noisy track mm -hmm. uh, but even even when you were doing that and let's say you didn't need to turn any reverbs or pans or change eq or anything i always felt like if there wasn't somebody sitting there listening to it when the actual mix went down it wasn't gonna be music somehow like like if there wasn't that kind of you know how when like a, like a good producer is listening and that just that listening makes everybody play better i felt like even in the mix like if if your attention wavered and you like suddenly kind of blanked out for a bar there's like a hole in the piece of music in the mix in the final mix i know it's totally esoteric but it really felt like that it's a performance and and, and you know you never got it right you could never get it perfect somebody was always fucking up the pan but then you know i forgot to bring up the kick drum here but i did i, I accidentally brought the snare down when you brought the guitar up and you know it's all hitting the compressor in the end and you you know then you just decide which has the best just which has the best vibe it's all about it's all about the vibe which uh, uh you know you can i'm i'm sure we do do that we do our best and we're you know we're we're concerned but it is a really different kind of the technical side is is more i mean i, I sound like an old geezer now but it seems like it's more musical and more about presence of the performance um, you know and glenn gould used to mix the shit out of this stuff so uh, you know, he's, he was almost uh, uh, kind of foreshadowing where we were, where we where we're now. You know, like um, my my uh, friend, engineer friend Benny, who uh, is here in Berlin with me, when we produce together, he's he's actually bought like a huge, uh, I don't even know what it's called, like a controller uh, that looks like a mixing desk, and he set it up in. In the traditional way you can do eq on the thing you can do compression you can do the reverbs mm -hmm. you have the you know and you have the faders and and uh, you can put pro tools into record and it would record the flying faders and the, and the we actually the performance yeah. and we so and we'd actually do that like now uh, that's like, awesome. like and uh it makes a it makes a huge difference it really does yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i can bet you know and you're you're safe because um well i mean obviously you could undo stuff but it's probably a pain in the ass and then you you kind of lose your reason for doing it but um you know because at least in the, the old days the, the the compression of the tape going into the 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 bus compression nothing's going to go really wrong it's just a matter yeah. of whether you feel like something something exciting happened you, you know what pat told me he uh he did a session for um Joe Zawinul, and um, Joe told him that they would do a freaking overdub during the mix. Mm -hmm. He would do like just a little percussion overdub during the mix. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Now that that's some that's some balls. I would I would like to figure out a way to do that. Yeah, I heard I heard about that that people were doing that in the old days. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and 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 you know, the Beatles are the ones we go. I keep going back to because they were pushing the technology, and we have rec, you know, recordings. Um, we have documentation about we're going to do a backing vocal and bounce the tambourine and like the vibra slap at the same time. So there's no one doing that shit. We're going to get the balance right, and with you know, you know, like this. Um aspect that you mentioned that you know maybe there's there's the producer or you kind of like have to be kind of present during the mix to make it for my just for myself i found um uh, an alternative way of dealing with that because i i agree i agree with what you're saying um 
But since I know that I can't always be present and I won't always be present, I sort of like assume the position of that it's okay if I miss something. And I sort of like, I even make that the initial state of my approach. So sometimes with some productions, I don't ever want to know the song, the names of the songs. Mm. I just don't want to know because like whenever I actually do listen, I want to listen as if it's the first time, mm. not labeling things, mm. not, you know, not having, not having uh, enough labels to not pay real attention anymore. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so that means that uh, it's it's pretty amazing. Like sometimes I, I'm producing like a whole record, and at the end, I you know when it's when I have some distance from it, I listen back to it, and I'm hearing new things that I really did not know were there, mm-hmm. even even sections mm-hmm. where I thought like where probably I said okay no I don't need to spend attention here because. We have the musicians who know what they want. We have the engineer. I don't need to. I really don't need to uh, um, get anal retentive about yeah. things. Mm-hmm. And and those you know those productions are the best I find. Like where there's a degree of freedom, um, also from my side as the person in, in you know who's responsible. Mm-hmm. Uh, and. And I mean, if I tell that to some people, they get scared, you know, like, yeah, they, don't say you know? That. yeah. but, but I, I really think that it's a, it's, it's a real, it really is part of what I do also with my own, with my own music, like just allowing, you could say it's allowing mistakes. Like you're not, you know, something you're not paying attention. So something may happen that is unexpected that you can't control because you're not paying attention. And, and that will be a precious moment. Mm, right. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know. I mean, it's again. So maybe you know, like talking from a perspective of having decades of experience, it you know, it's it's just because I I am who I am and what I've gone through that I can say these things. It's it's probably right. not not something that well, you, you, you 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 um you've gone around the circle enough to know that it, th- th- these strategies have worked yeah you know yeah and, and yeah there's a, there's a confidence in that because that that uh, uh i mean confidence is such a funny word but it, it, it definitely and you can fake confidence but it's it's uh it just makes no, you relax makes you relax into the into the experience rather than being feeling like you have to be uptight about something you know in a way uh now like one of like robert's things comes to my mind which is like trust trust the creative impulse or whatever he mm-hmm. says mm-hmm. right i think that's what it is really mm-hmm. like you don't need to control everything um because things will will arrange themselves right mm-hmm. in a way and and especially especially in music, in music i think it's it's crucial that there's life there's life in the performance there's life in the production life mm-hmm. as in you know some things shouldn't be controlled or you could also say well you know some people say make uh, fix it in the mix as something negative but i think it's cool because mm-hmm. like it gives you the freedom to have like so let's say like a like a freer performance right like you 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 can make a bold performance and if something's wrong then yeah it will get fixed or you know or later in the mastering or whatever i think it's um it's different. It's very different from uh, from live performance. Mm. It's it really is, it really is is not the same thing. And like trying to trying to treat uh, recording like a live performance, I find that a little sad in a way. Because yeah, it, I do too. I do too. Yeah, you you're 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 missing the you're missing the point, and you, it and you never listen to it the same. It's not the same listening experience. It's not the same art form. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you're, 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 yeah, yeah. It's a totally, totally different thing. Hey, so like, um, on my, uh, parallel processing path here in my brain, (laughs) when you were talking about the two sides of the stick doing this now, I, I think I remembered the name of the song. It's the, it's transient joy. Yeah. Transient joy. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, funny enough, I I got um, 
you know, I was living in New York at the time and um, Mike, I think his name is Mike Deputato, believe it or not, I can remember that. He heard that, I think somehow he heard that record, I don't know. And he um, brought me in to play in his band where he already had a bass player. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a guitarist. So it wasn't like I was going to do guitar, but I was going to do that role in mm -hmm. his, in his, his band. And that was like, oh man, that's, uh, this is awesome. This is so awesome. You know, like I, I, I mean, I love playing bass parts and, and I didn't really know how to solo at the time, but I, you know, I can now. And I, I, I learned enough uh, to, to, to fake it for a while until I could, but this, this in-between role, um, was really cool because you're just exploring, you, you know, you're exploring the, that the, there was this freedom to explore the instrument in a way that uh, you weren't doing the normal stuff. Anything, anything Abbey normal would work. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the beauty of the, um, of the two, two region instrument where you have like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, strings, um, that are overlapping, like same pitches on both sides, and you can you do these. Yeah, these, you know, these, and these. funny enough, I didn't even, I never even thought about that the way. I remember Tony saying something uh, at some point, and uh, you know, Tony's been playing longer, longer than us for sure. Um, yeah. Although um, I don't think of him as like going into the instrument as much as we do. Maybe he does now, but um, but he said something very early on. Uh, it may have been when we were doing the Thrack record, or maybe it was even afterwards when we were when he was he had this idea of let's tune the things in quarter tones. <laughs> and he said something about you know the thing that's unique about this instrument is that it's truly polyphonic. And I was like, holy shit, you're absolutely right. You know, guitar isn't polyphonic. Um, even a keyboard isn't polyphonic, not really, you know, unless you have two of them. And, and here we go. You can actually, um, one side can go lower than the other and they can cross right over each other. And, uh, yes. you know, that is pretty, and, and, you know, you could still do that on the mono instrument. It's a little, it's a little different and you have to fiddle the, you know, you have to deal with the strings and the, 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 Oh, you you can you can well you can do that on the mono instrument yes but you would uh, again you don't it's tricky you don't it's, you don't, you don't, it's, you, don't get to, you don't get to play in the same uh, region of the of the of the neck of the fretboard right and, right. and that that's what what really makes and it makes, sounds different it sounds different because you're going to be on different strings and different yes spots. exactly yeah. but if you if you if you have two strings that are the same gauge and the same pitch and so then then it's as if you have two instruments, like two mm -hmm. guitars, and you can play a real poly polyphonic and mm -hmm. music, and that's yeah. And that's you know that's really the aspect that drew me to the instrument in the first place. And and actually one of the pieces that I'm working on for this these recordings capitalizes on that. Where where it's for me, it's almost like this magic. Like you, you're in your fingers are doing this, and there's this other melody coming out that shouldn't be there. Um, yeah. And that's super cool. I mean, the, 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 the funny thing about that is that the audience doesn't give a shit. You know, whatever you've discovered, they're just, you know, they don't hear, they don't hear that it's, it's, they don't hear the magic of it the way we hear it because your, your fingers are doing this over here, your fingers are doing that. And then there's this weird, the two high notes of the both sides are, are meeting together. And, and uh, it's just kind of, it's kind of a personal, I don't, I feel like it's a personal magic thing. But still cool yeah also here i think it's it's a matter of like your your own awareness um yeah i mean i don't want to get back into like discussion with uh with like where the whole like where the stick music has gone right mm -hmm. and where it's gone from the very beginning like yeah sure you can do cool things but you also need to understand what you're doing and you need to be able to move on the instrument like you know the fact that you can just be in one position and just do this and it sounds cool that is cool right but if it's if it ends there then i then i i just you know i just it's not for me 
right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that's why I'm still a big fan of the idea to like have like beginners should start with the eight string mm. and then move to a 10 string or even 12 if they want to, right? But you mean because, kind of like, because you can kind of get lost in the coolness? Yes. Yeah. And you and you you just do want to you just do want to understand uh, how to move along the strings with your hands before you can kind of like you get tied down in one place, mm -hmm. which happens so quickly, you know. I mean, uh, to be honest, five strings is enough for me. I would I would have only five strings except for I I I, I like I, I need some of the bass notes. That's all. But for as yes. far as exploring the instrument and just playing cool stuff, five strings, even four, but five five is plenty. I mean, it's 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 the same for me. I mean, as a matter of fact, like I could break any string exactly. in a performance and still play yeah. the yeah. show. You know, like yeah. <laughs> it's funny, you know. But I think that's that's really kind of like an interesting interesting aspect of musicianship, right? Where it's not so much anymore about physical um, positions of notes, but where it's about uh, knowing. What the notes are that you play and then you kind of like find a way to play them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah i mean I, i'm i'm really uh really interested in in hearing the the gravity or gravity stuff at Me some too. point i'm as i'm as interested as anyone do, do you do you have uh so so you did record one piece already so you started uh, it's, not recording. it's not complete but i've started it enough to know um uh, how to how to do it and and um, how I'm going to record. Does it does it sound better than the samples when you play it? <laughs> samples are pretty good. Yeah, it does. It does. It's uh um uh the the um it's so so much more a lot. You know, it's so much more wiggly and alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what's weird about the samples um, is if you just have one note. I mean, it just sounds like a harpsichord or something. It's pretty. It's pretty. Um, you know, did you have you seen this uh, harpeggi sample library? No. There's a harpeggi sample library out, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, okay, well, maybe that. You know, maybe I could use that instead of mine. You know, maybe it sounds better, and I. I listen to some examples. Sounds sounds terrible. I mean, the sound is fine. It's just when you reduce it to um, just what's happening with the finger on the string. It's just I don't know. It just sounds like a harpsichord. It could be it could be anything. There's no care. There's no character. Uh, yeah. And and my samples are kind of like that too. You know, the the mm -hmm. the, the thing that's uh, I really like about it is I've got. Uh, Got tap. I got a tap sample, and they're, they're they're. It's not even that many samples. It's like ten to do the whole six or seven octaves. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe maybe fifteen, maybe at the most. I mean, I didn't go crazy. I got tapped. I got plucked, and then I've got mutes. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's three. You know, it's three pretty different colors. Um, you know the the. Um, some of them actually you could use them but um the bass parts they just don't sound that they just don't feel that great you know yeah i i made i made a a library of my instrument a while ago like a long time ago 12 years 13 years ago something like that and used it on on a few records where um where it was appropriate right and mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of like what I what I did was, um, I, I again I wasn't really very uh, concerned about getting consistent. I, I actually uh, played every single note though, okay. right? So and I you know what I tried to do is I want I tried to give like uh, vibrato, like different kinds of vibrato, um, every, you know like improvising like okay so it's C B. Shop, uh, you know, like, and and somehow the fact that they are not trying to be the same, the same. works yeah. better. Works better than trying to make them. Yeah, and and that's the problem. I think that's the problem with the harpeggi and 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 some of my, uh, you know, some of why I wouldn't use mine. Actually, what does sound pretty cool is just a chord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, 
a really clean chord. And, and of course you can make chords that are hard for us to play. Yeah, and, and they, they would sound completely different played. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because you don't you don't really even as precise as you can be. It's still a different finger on a different string, and the the I don't know the attack or even if you hit them at the same time, the the blossom and the bloom is totally different every time all, you play it. It's also they they you know three notes will go through the through the one pickup at the mm -hmm. same time. Yeah, right, yeah. and not it's yeah. Uh, yes yeah. yeah, so, so do you have um i don't I, you know i don't want to use the word but i'm just do you have a deadline for it do you kind of like have an idea for your what? for your for your gravities do i have a, a what a deadline no no and that's why it's taking me forever yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um no i think what i do i do you know the, there's a lot of things that i'm juggling um and there's a confidence factor in is it going to work now i know it's actually going to work going to work you know um and then i'm trying to figure out um there's some sonic aspects that i don't um i'm still getting my audio chops around um mm -hmm. and i may be getting uh michael kotze to mix it but i have to figure out if that's going to work you know i i tend to use i tend to use too much low end Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to fiddle around with, I'm trying to figure that out um, because I, it, 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 it's such a different context when you don't have drums and when it's very percussive and I, I you know, and so I'm playing around with that. So I kind of have to, that, this is why I decided I, I better go ahead and just make one or two mm -hmm. and, and, and figure out like how uh, there's so many, there's, there's the composition, there's the performance, and then there's the technical side of, it's not just the mix, but I also kind of want to, I want to do, um, some of it I want it to almost sound like it's electronic music or, or have the aesthetic of a, a, electronic music, even though it isn't, like maybe with extreme panning or, or doing some of the wrong things that you would do with, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, like extreme bass panning or something, you know, and I don't know if that's, you know, I don't know, there's a few things I got to figure out. So I got to get, I got to get around the circle once or twice with a couple of pieces and then, it, then it'll all start to make sense. And then it's, then, then the trick is um, what kind of reverb do you use? Or do you use reverb at all? Yeah. You know, um, I'm liking dry a lot. I'm liking not being drawn to the reverb, but then everything's um, in the same plane, right? So you're 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 losing this, and 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 then I, I you know I want to do quad mixes. Yeah, I want to do quad mixes, uh, but that's that's less concern. I can do that later. I can do that later. So no, I don't have a deadline. I'm just kind of um, once I get around the circle once or twice, then it'll it'll be easier. And there's a bunch of little pieces that are uh, going to be easy to develop once I kind of made. Once the sonic palette is clear to me. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the earlier pieces too, this is getting super technical, but some of the earlier pieces I had, um, maybe the ones, maybe something that you heard, I can't remember what I played you or not, but the, the bass is uh, chugging along, the bass is driving things. And um, that's cool. But it also has a, there's a drawback to that, to having the, um, mm -hmm. the drive of the piece be based in the low frequencies, you know, so I'm, I'm, I, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a balance of that element that I'm still uh, wrestling with how much to um, have the drive down here as opposed to here. And, yeah. and you know, and, and whether the basis the low end is supporting that and but you can change that by by taking out low frequencies of the bass so there's you know i'm, I'm uh, but yeah. for, for but example that, that that can affect the, that can affect the actual compositional process because if you're going to have the bass doing that that's a certain kind of thing or if you're going to having or if you're going to have low notes and when i say low notes i also mean low frequencies uh 
be supportive and then you're putting the the drive you know without a drummer the drive is all the you know with the drummer he he does the drive and then you you know you you just get on the motorcycle but this is this is not that yeah i i did not approach the uh string quartet composition from what you just described um mm -hmm. but somehow i think uh intuitively i found solutions to that because like at some point it became obvious to me that this this music is not it is like one instrument mm -hmm. it's not like you know it's not like the whole quartet bass, yeah the whole quartet is one instrument mm -hmm. so um so what that uh and it was i can't remember if it was like a conscious thing but it was like the I, I I really didn't have the roles. The roles weren't like really defined. Like the bass, the bass or the cello could be playing a high note, and you know, and first violin would play a lower note than that, right? Yeah. And 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 by by sort of like having this inter interleaved thinking of the ranges of the instruments and the the, the timbres and the different registers of the instruments sort of kind of like made for then made up for this dri driving or percussive element mm -hmm. like you know so so um like just just like this the first piece on the on the uh, you know on the record which is boon like there you have the ticky 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 tick like this these staccato kind of uh, kind of things and and they kind of like move between the parts so they're not always in the same instrument and somehow that really kind of like helps for the whole thing to to have that forward uh, movement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whereas if you if it's just one instrument then it's it gets boring you could say you like it's just tune, gets, yeah you start to tune out and it's just a yeah 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 so so in a way just just like like and maybe this is also something that um like because you said that you are in this phase of where you could call it production or arrangement or orchestration right where parts get kind of like moved around exactly yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and um even just doubling something up on the high octave uh sometimes you open up a really awesome thing sometimes you kind of open up a not so awesome thing because now something suddenly is up there yeah. and, and, and it, it can throw off the balance of, it can throw off the balance, you know? Yeah, very much so. And that's, that's where you could go like one note in one instrument, like you would do, would do octave displacements. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you would go like this, like the, the parts would cross over, right? Mm -hmm. And that way you would, you would get the, the, if the, that effect without the the lines getting boring or you right, know right 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 yeah you know and even I, even even if it's the like even if you were doing that with the two violinists it's the yeah. identical instrument but somehow it's going to be there's a sh there's still more shift going on than if it's just one one guy hammering away at it right yeah exactly exactly yeah. it's 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 always like this this idea of blending i like that word mm. Like and and I think that's how how we we need to write in a way with the blending in mind, not with not with the performer in mind actually, like because a lot of people say oh this is not very uh, violinistic right or this is not <laughs> very pianistic, I don't care you know like I want it to sound the way I want it to sound and then sometimes you have to do things that are not um, not in the standard way so like one like violin wouldn't just play a line but would be jumping octaves mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. and that may as as a part you know standing on its own that part wouldn't sound good but in the context it starts making sense and that's what i meant when i when i'm saying that it's the the quartet is sort of like one instrument yeah i i, I think that's a great way to think about it especially nowadays I, I mean i can picture it in the old days where people are kind of having their solo moments um, yeah but there was there, there was uh, obviously Bach and Vivaldi right like even Vivaldi like what's doing these things where the lead lines and the chordal lines were sort of like overlapping in interesting ways and and you would you would get this uh shifting and 
I think I think it's I don't know. It, again, there's probably this again this word confidence, right? Like, <laughs> and but but since you are you're you are the performer, right, of those pieces, why not really go crazy and like and I yeah. don't know. I mean, that's that's what I would think you should do. I mean, you you have more than a week in the studio to do it. So. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> I do. And actually, only uh, uh, after a couple of hours, I'm I'm wasted. I, I you know I have to take a break. A couple hours is, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I dump it over to my uh, I dump it over to the Dropbox, and then I go for a drive in the car and listen to it again <laughs> in the car. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, there's too much low end again. <laughs> go on, take that 200 hertz down. <laughs> yeah, I find I find that. Um with any ensemble writing really i tend to have a much smaller space that i start with like you know i don't really it's like the baritone octave which is the lowest i wouldn't go to the sub octave or you know contrabass octave at all when writing which is which is super interesting like i always and like with the um uh, you know with the touch guitar that's the the way it sounds the best mm -hmm. right and that's why i think you know having played with the orpa string choir i think that's where it happened so with mm -hmm. the orpa string choir i played i had the eight string war guitar and so playing a low c which was like the same low c that they had on their uh guitars mm -hmm. but mine would actually sound like a bass and you, theirs would and sound like a guitar are you talking about the lowest lowest c or the, the one lowest that's no, okay. the, the, the lowest lowest C that they have. Yeah, the, is, the is, cello is like, C. Yeah, it's the seventh fret on the yeah, second yeah, yeah. lowest no, string. Yeah, it, it sounds like a. Yeah, it sounds like. And a it, it sounds like a real bass, and so that was interesting because then I was kind of like playing an octave higher than a bass player, but mm -hmm. I still sounded like a bass. Yeah, and yeah. and that sort of kind of like was was the interesting, and that that sort of informed my uh, understanding of the ranging. Um, bass parts because then you can have that bass part there but you can then you have space underneath with accents to put like even mm -hmm. even another melody if you want to right that's interesting you're reminding me i mean first of all those uh low notes on on the guitar and the, the those acoustic guitars in the new standard tuning they're very uh well it's with a pick and it's very a lot of upper harmonics so when you put if you play the if you play the low and the reason why I was thinking about this because I, I went back and listened to uh, some of the Robert Fripp string quartet and I thought, man, I really probably shouldn't have played that in the lowest octave because it's actually more separated. That if I had been in the same range as the guitars and sometimes I did like uh, maybe bicycle of Afghanistan or a I don't know which piece. Uh, you know, sometimes I was there, but. Um, it's like they're they're okay. We're playing the same note, but their harmonics are up here, whereas the 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 war guitar is like flush here. And and you go down here, and now it's it's too separated. That's a that's a hole, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You could have them both. You know, if you if you overdubbed, you know, but it, like you're saying, if you overdub down here, you would probably change the part and make it more sparse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but 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 you put that one, in, which is exactly what I was saying that I'm running into with these recordings like like if you have too much low end down there uh filling up the space it's it's makes more of a separation so hey you could also just because i it just occurred to me you could also transpose the uh top parts down yeah you could transpose everything an octave down or a fifth down or something and see what happens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean that that may also be a uh, worth well, exploring it's one, of, it's one of the it's one of the things that i'm running into oh, well no, it's not an issue but it's you know it's so different to parts in the same octave played on the bass side of the instrument or the guitar side of the instrument it sounds so different um mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 at least on my instrument where it's set up that the the guitar side definitely is stringier and more nasal you know, even though the low string on the guitar side is pretty, there's a lot of low end in it. It's still got those, 
those upper harmonics, you know, the, the mm-hmm. whereas on the bass side, it's just, it's fat, you know, until you get to the very highest string, uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's a very different sound and the tension is different and the placement on the neck is different. So it's, uh, um, yeah, it's very, very, very different. And, and I played around with that before double, uh, doubling parts on the opposite side of the instrument, uh, is a cool mm-hmm. sound. I may even, you know, to, to, to kind of blow the original concept completely out of the water. I'm, I'm actually feeling like somewhere I've got to try um, doing a whole bunch of uh, unison overdubs as if it was like six guys playing the same part, just yeah. to see and see how to, you know, the, 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 I, I remember Andy Partridge talking about this vocal effect that he would do where he would do a, uh, he does his vocals, or at least he did 15 or 20 years ago, where he does the, uh, puts the speakers out of phase and then sets the mic up so that the, the, the speakers don't come into the microphone because it's set perfectly. And then he'll sing to the speakers. Okay. He'll do, um, he'll do a, a vocal and he'll work really hard to get the perfect vocal take. And then he'll do eight overdubs of the vocal take and so there's like they won't use any reverb or something like like he'll just let the main vocal and then the eight of them are just spread out very quietly yeah uh so i've got to try i've got to try that something like that because this is the context for that um and you know it could sound okay could sound okay but you know that's an orchestration for me that's an orchestration choice that's not a comp not necessarily compositional choice and if it doesn't sound good, I'm throwing it out. If it sounds good, I'm going to run with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but as uh, like like we said before, you know, it's it's a studio. You know, you're recording in a studio, so you might as well experiment. You know, I think. Yeah. 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 But at the end, at the end of the day, obviously, I want it to sound good. But at the end of the day, I want it to be. Uh, my my hope is that it's the. Um, it's not the sound that you're following. It's just the, the melodies and the, the, the flow of the, fr- the phrasing is what's really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas a lot of my records, it is the sound that's interesting. You know, mm-hmm. I've, I've come up with interesting sounds. Okay, yeah, playing cool stuff here and there, but um, I kind of I kind of wanted to remove that element from my, you know, all the, all the effects and stuff and the cool, crazy sounds that we get i kind of wanted to remove that from my vocabulary for the moment dude dude you, sh- you shouldn't have said all of this publicly right there's so much pressure now i don't care i actually really don't care i i think the stuff is really cool and you know it's just another record yeah i know I'm, I'm so happy that you're making another record to be honest yeah, me too yeah i hope i finish it <laughs> <laughs> you know like it's really uh do you still have some time or yeah i got a lot yeah 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 like things have been have been pretty tough for me kind of like recently just everything like all the opportunities have been like obviously because of COVID, like there was no opportunities for a long time but then like i tried to build something else up and now everything you know all of that goes down the shitter somehow Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, people canceling on me like every day, like a new person is canceling on me and and the music, like the the bandcamp sales, I really believe because of the bandcamp Friday thing, I think they've really it's really, they have fallen, really off. fallen off fallen yeah. off like and yeah. and severely, like it's like ninety percent less yeah. than like six yeah. months ago. yeah, shocking I see the same thing. kind of kind of shocking. and and I have to say, like it's it's even though like obviously like inside I I do want to keep making music, but I just like like you know for example looking at Bandcamp when was the last time that any some anybody bought music of mine from Bandcamp like maybe six months ago and then like a month month ago one mm-hmm. person right like mm-hmm. I I do have subscribers so I know that like I, you know I have subscribers and that's great but. But that number has been constant for two years, mm-hmm. right? So, like, so I'm starting to think, okay, like, where is this going to go? Like, um, if I'm going to make a new record, is, is anybody going to be interested? And 
Mm. And just, just three weeks ago, I, I put out, well, an Indian guy, an Indian label put out a record of mine. Like nobody even reacted to it. Like maybe two, two people wrote to me saying mm. thank you, right? It's it's really like it's it's come to the to the point where um, there's like like no feedback and uh, mm -hmm. no 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 physical feedback like no physical sales no it's mm -hmm. it's it's so shocking yeah right? yeah and, I mean it and, could be that could be that it, 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 it could be kind of a backlash to um, uh, you know everybody went inward in this last year and and that was made actually a lot of interest in music and it could be that everyone's just burned out on yeah getting new stuff and they just want to look outward which, which i which i which i totally get and you know that's not the point and like again like what i'm saying is not i'm not uh, i'm also not complaining about anything it's just yeah, yeah. Pure, pure observation it has it definitely has an effect and, yeah, it's and it's it's a, it's an observation where I like when I then start observing myself making these observations, like what does it do with me? What does it, you know, mm -hmm. like do I still can I still justify? Um, well, not to spend the time. I don't know. I don't even know how the to effort it. and the energy and the yeah, the effort, right? the effort and the energy, because that effort and energy is not going to go to what may be important. You know, that's mm -hmm. the whole point, right? Right. So, uh, and I've never you, been. You a, mean a, like a, you mean like which? What's the What's could, actually the important? Family, thing? family, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or or actually making money. Yeah. For yeah. the family, right? Like yeah. I don't care about money, but. Yeah. Yeah, I need it for the family. So, yeah. and it's sort of, it's so interesting how that has kind of like started annoying at me. And, um, yeah. yeah. And, and, and at the same time, I can, I can talk with you about, you know, being inspired to go into the studio and actually do the work, you know, yeah. but on the, on the other hand, there is this, uh, this extreme, uh, evaluate, uh, yeah, devaluation of, if does that work, it would exist. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, you, yeah. You know what I mean, right? So, yeah. and, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like, it's a bizarre situation to be yeah. in, I have to say. Yeah. Right? yeah, it's a tricky thing with uh, the family because um, all what you have to give is your presence. So if you're not there, and I don't just mean like traveling, but certainly traveling, I definitely stopped traveling. Uh, yeah, I yeah, just, yeah, I know. That I was, know that, was the, that was uh, that was the one thing, and it's pretty precious, and it doesn't last that long. You know, that's all. You, that's all you get. Just being yeah. around it. That's the thing. You know. Okay, sure. You want to have money, <laughs> absolutely, to pay your to pay your bills. But it's it's actually just like being there with them and just playing with them and interacting. And, yeah. Uh, and just just uh, you know like. Every dad would would say this, but my my kid is awesome, right? Like she's she's awesome. No, yours <laughs> is the awesome one. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 just uh, yeah, I mean, like uh, you know, seeing that in one and a half year, she's gone from like one form of being to a completely different form of being, and. Like then, like, I don't know, like being away for six weeks and coming back, like I will have uh, missed yeah. a lot, right? Yeah. And, and then, you know, if, and this is, this is really where the equation kind of like needs to be uh, on the plus side, right? Like is this time spent away in music, in, you know, making music? It, is that is it worth is it worth it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah right. yeah 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 i hear you yeah. and, and you know it's um uh i mean you're a little bit like you're 10 years older than i was at the time only when, only five years older i think or no when was you well maybe yeah i was 37 
Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So exactly, exactly point. ten years. Yeah, exactly yeah so years. Yeah. you know, it's it doesn't quite equate, but definitely I had the sense of um, I'll, I'll I'll get back to this later. Not not totally like that, but like it's going to be there when it's going to be there. But my kid's not going to be, you know, that 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 sense. You know, it's different. You're ten years older, but um, uh, yeah. 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 So it's it's really um, also this awkward situation, like where like the only way out is to ask for donations. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, even without asking, unfortunately, it's the honor system anyway. So in a way, asking for donations is kind of like just just having it be upfront, which is basically. You know, you uh, you guys can all steal this stuff anyway. You're only yeah. you're only paying because it's really easy to get it right then, or because you're you're supporting. I mean, that's the that's the truth of it. You know, you want you want us to keep doing it. You know, it's not a it's not a, a it's not an exchange of goods. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a confidence. Uh, it's a it's a vote. For keep going that's what it is yeah 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 and i mean it's just that at the moment like like my my uh business partner who i i've worked with for 25 years right has now decided to take a job like take up a day job mm -hmm. and um and i think that it's 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 good i think it's a good decision but it's also um i can see that it will also change my world like mm -hmm. it will you know what i mean it's it's mm -hmm. like it's like the the avalanche has kind of like mm -hmm. started going downhill right and mm -hmm. and uh it's yeah it's it's kind of shocking in a way mm -hmm. but I, on the other hand like whenever there is a situation like this i know that i'm going to come out of it like at the end and uh, things will have changed and usually for the better, you know, something so, will change. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no guarantee that we're going to be able to have whatever we want, certainly, but it seems to, it seems to, uh, you know, if you want to do something, you, you, you kind of end up making a form. It, 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 we just have to be really flexible with the forms. The form could totally change, you know, so, so will you move? Do you know if we're, you're going to leave? I don't know house? yet. I mean, I need to leave my house, but I don't know where to go yet. I don't really know what to do. Um, but I, I want to simplify my life and cut my expenses. And, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I've, I've been lucky to have this space, but it's not, I, I've never really had a real um, studio space, not, not a fancy space, but like I've never had a soundproof space. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'll get that next time, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I, 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 I need to, I need what's, to the, what's the, what's the time frame for that, for moving, for finding another, it's the no same rush. as my record, same as my record. Okay. So, okay. So there's, so there's no rush. I mean, I'd, I'd like to, I, 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 I don't, I don't know year, year or two, maybe mm -hmm. I, don't know. I want to do the right thing. You know, I don't, I don't, I probably. I probably only have one more move in me. I don't know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I want to get, um, but I, 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 yeah, I don't know. And, you know, it's so strange to be, um, I mean, Seattle's a great place, but um, in, within the quarantine situation, you could be anywhere. And um, uh, I get a lot of, I get a lot of, um, inspiration it's more than inspiration from from the wilderness certain kinds of wilderness mm -hmm. um which we kind of have here but it's it's uh you know i've been here for like 25 years i lived in you know, oregon for five you, years you have the zoo right next door so. i have the zoo right next door you know there's the dinosaur exhibit at the zoo i can hear the i can hear the the, the, the monkey screaming in the morning it's almost like being at chemo's house yeah i don't know i just i'm trying to make everything smaller and get less yeah. stuff you know and and uh 
um, you know, there's, there's, here's my life's work. There it is. <laughs> there it is. You know, I, I think it's, it's clever to, to uh, scale down anyway. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, and, it's, it's the, it's what everybody should be doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think. Yeah. So, so this was our last conversation. <laughs> I'll, I'll never speak to you again. <laughs> no, but this was the tenth uh, conversation, which is uh, it's great. I mean, like, um, let's see what we're going to do after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I like the idea of of. Um, what were you saying? Like bringing somebody else in or something, or, or or what were you thinking? We don't know yet. Make it make it make it a weekly show. Yeah, yeah. Live, uh, where people can interact with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we, we yeah. make it an act an actual late night show. Or have a top, you know, have a topic or something even. Yes, yes, yeah. and yeah. and and maybe uh, have like a subscription thing or something where. You know, and, and you know, something like that could be, might as well be a, a replacement for um, playing shows, you know? I thought you were gonna say our therapist. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I bet. Uh, I bet if we think of it, and and and, and uh, I bet if we think kind of really outside the box, something cool could happen. Yeah. 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 What would what would be kind of cool is if we could call up random people, and uh, if they didn't know we were gonna, I don't know, you know, like we could just call up different guitar players and have it suddenly be online with them. <laughs> No guitar players. Yeah, I know that. As soon as I said that, I thought, uh, wouldn't it be more interesting if it was musicians who didn't know who we were, who played instruments that we yeah. didn't know? Yeah. <laughs> or or not, not even musicians. You know what I've always wanted to do, and I, and and I I wanted to do this since um, Alonso and I went to uh, uh, to Africa. Was it was so cool to go to a little town and find the drummer who taught and take a lesson from them. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to do that? Like all, uh, this is the exact opposite of what I actually want to do, but to actually go around the world with a couple of musicians and take lessons from different people on instruments that you didn't play and mm -hmm. document that and, and interact could be so cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. I don't want to travel around the world that much. A little bit. I want to do a little bit now, but yeah. Wow, your hair is awesome right now. That is amazing. Look at all that hair. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to go now. Yes, um, uh, I'll I'll talk to you on Monday about the book. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye for now. Cheers. Cheers.